Hello guys, this is Gnogart and today I'm back with some Duel Links content actually. Um, they just released BA uh, in the new box and I like the deck a lot so I thought why not just get into the box and play a couple of games with it on stream. So if you want to follow me on Twitch, it's uh, also just Gnogart on Twitch. Um, I played this deck for like I think three or four hours on stream and so the list you see right here um, is not optimal because at the moment I only own one Skarn so keep that in mind. Um, I will show you a better like more optimized list how to play it uh, just uh, in a bit. Um, also this list is a bit experimental I wanted to uh, try something out and that is um, overlay regeneration which is a skill that says you can uh, place one spell card in your hand underneath an Xyz. So what does it do in this deck? You can use two level threes to make Giga Brilliant. You can rank that up into Core Beige, and you can then use your skill to put um, the Good and Evil and the Burning Abyss under that Core Beige, and then rank that up again into Rhinos Bus. So you can actually have two BAs plus the spell makes Rhinos Bus turn one, which is a pretty good boss monster and. Um, also you set up follow up because good and evil in the burning abyss and the grave says you can discard a BA monster from your hand, banish this card from your grave and search any BA card from your deck. So the best follow up is usually um, having seer in hand, discarding seer, searching something like a skarm or the tuner depending on what you want to go into and then having a play just with one card. Um, it was fine mostly, but I didn't go into Rhinos Buzz that often and using a semi-limit slot on a monster that comes up from time to time didn't feel that good. So that was one thing that I didn't like. Also, with how many back row cards we run, sometimes you cannot make a push because all the BAs say you need to have no spell and trap cards to special them. So I'm experimenting with a list that has a lot less back row. Um, I'm going to show you that now. So that was the experimental list. Um, for the lists, how I would play them. Um, I actually prepared here. It's Sarah because I like Mind of the Planner actually, which says if a mo you can once per duel send all banished cards from your opponent into another dimension. So if you far far their monster, you just banish it forever. So this is the vanilla list, how I would run it right now. So three Skarm, uh, we have 15 monsters. In 25 cards, I think if you have 14 monsters, you have an 80% chance to open two, which is what, was, um, what I was aiming at. But since we run three Crane Crane, so if, you're two, run, like, if you draw two of them, that's not a combo. I upped the count by one. So you should have a rank 3 play at all times. Um, Book of Moon obviously is the best card you can run here because it's a spell, you can run it in um, your turn, you can just activate it from hand. Uh, you, always, you can always activate it on any monster to clear your back row, so even on your own monsters. And also it protects your Dante or Virgil from Karma Cut, which is also pretty nice. Econs to um, also again it's a quick spell which is very good and you can also tribute your monsters for example Dante if Dante doesn't have material anymore you can tribute it take a monster from your opponent and then Dante recovers something from the grave. Ballista is also very good for tributing and it's just a very flexible trap it deals with monsters or back row depending on what you are facing. So as you can see here I would run three Skarm. I would run at least, like if you're on a budget, get at least two Skarm. I'm also still digging for the second one. With two Skarm, you should be more than fine. One Skarm is one, sometimes a bit sketchy because you kind of want to open Skarm so you can get the card advantage going. So that's the safer list. And then for the other list that is a bit more experimental, you will see in the replay I had some games where I opened a lot of BA names. And opening a lot of BA names actually makes you go through back row or disruption in general um, much easier. So I was experimenting with a list that is very high on monsters. You see it's 19 monsters in a 25 card deck. Um, although I run Kite right here because 
as I said before, sometimes you clog your back row, so we just have the very flexible back row, and then we have kite right because you can keep it in hand, you can protect yourself from getting killed, and you can also mill it with Dante and still have free protection in the grave. So this is the list how I would run them, if I would recommend it to you. The replays I'm showing you is, however, with the Rhinosbus list, but I think it's still very cool replays. So let's get into it. So this is the first replay. Um, I was in gold today because I haven't played for a couple months, so I had to get up again. But I still think the games that I picked out were pretty decent to show what this deck is capable of. So on this replay we are going first. Our opponent is Yuya and it's a pendulum deck. So um, since we're in gold we can't really infer anything about the opponent's decks. Um, but if you see pendulums scales then it's usually like Melodios or Dynamist. So our hand we have Seer, we have the Tuner and you have a Lightning Vortex. I was toying around with Lightning Vortex because I was thinking okay if I go second I can nuke their board. If I go first, I just attach it for my nose bus, but it did not come up that often, so I just kicked it. Anyway, we normal summon Seer here, and then we special um, Rubik. We normal summon Seer because we want to, even though we detach um, the Rubik in a second, um, we want to play around the chance that we mill Scar uh, Seer off of the Dante, so we can bring back the Rubik and have more blockers, basically. So that's what we normally summon Seer here. So we use Dante and Mill, and we hit Barbar and the Fiend Griefing, which I was also testing out, and Kagna. Kagna says if uh, it, get, it's get, it gets in the grave, you can put a BA spell or trap into the grave, which I do here with the good and evil. Also, a nice thing this deck can do. Uh, is just set up the follow-up here. You see we have Seer here, spell here, so we have definitive follow up if we don't die this turn. So in that case, to not die, it would be much better if we had a back row or a chytroid instead of the lightning vortex. So they are dynamist, um, so they are scaling up here. And performing a pendulum sun. Uh, two monsters, use the spinos to tribute. Enemy controller, I don't know why. I think they were not aware that this Dante will float and thought, okay, if they attack here twice, that should be good enough for a game. 1500 plus 2500 makes sense, would be lethal. But we had a Seer under the Dante, so Dante triggers, Seer triggers. I was thinking I'm gonna get Dante back because they cannot run over Dante with that attack. Which is what we do here, and then Seer gets added back to the hand. So our turn, it actually doesn't matter what we draw here because we have the Seer and the Spell. So what we do here is we discard the Seer to search actually the other Spell card. We'll see in a minute why we do that. Because Seer will now bring back the Tuner, which is important. And then we use Overlay Regeneration to attach the Spell onto Dante so we can use the effect again. It's also pretty neat. We hit a Farfa here and two Crane Cranes, which doesn't matter. But the Farfa will now try to banish the Spinos, which they will negate with their scale, but then the scale is gone. So then we special another name, which is Alich, and then we Synchro Summon with those two into Virgil. Virgil effect, shuffle back the Spinos, put Dante into attack, and that is lethal. So here you can see some cute things you can do with overlay regeneration, but let's go to the next replay. So we're up against Yami Yugi. There are a lot of Yami Yugis in gold, apparently, um, but I think it's the same in Legend. Last time I played in Legend, there was also a lot of Destiny draw. So we play against Yami Yugi. They go first, and again we have the spell in hand, and we have two level threes, so let's see what we can do with it. They are Gaia, so they're going to use the skill. Use the field spell, search, get Gaia the magical knight, summon, summon fusion to the fusion monster, and pass. So they did not have any back row, so I was assuming maybe they have a hand trap. 
and I was trying to play around that, and then obviously they have the pawn. So we draw no name, but we draw an econ. So what I was doing here, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to force out the Gaia, because we have the Crane Crane, right? So we can special someone from Grave anyway. We're going to special the Rubik, and we're going to econ tribute to take, to force out the effect of the Gaia, because otherwise it would just be ODK, right? So they rightfully use the Gaia effect to pop the econ, so this has zero attack, and I cannot attack them with it. We still go into Crane Crane, which then gets us back the Rubik, and then we overlay for Virgil, actually. Why do we go for Virgil? We could have gone for Dante to get resources, and we also could have gone into Rhinos bus. The issue with Dante here is that they would still have the field spell, and if we have Dante and they have the field spell, our Dante cannot float, or Seer cannot float. This is very bad for us. Um, the Rhinos bus play would have been good here. I could have dealt a lot of damage, but then I would be dependent on top taking any BA name, otherwise like this card in the grave wouldn't do anything because we have a Canadian here. So I decided, oh, also this card pluses every turn, right? So I decided to take the line that gets rid of their card advantage and then we can just with a Canadian disrupt their next play and from there if we draw any BA we win. Because Virgil can also discard the spell. So we shuffle that back in. We turn this into attack just for fun and then attacked. So the opponent activates eccentric and they go and pop our back row. Obviously we don't chain Canadia because that would reset the Gaia. We don't want that. They put it into defense and then they special summon the Dark Flare Dragon into attack for whatever reason. Maybe they were scared of getting lethal. So we draw the back row and cannot do anything, we just attack into the Gaia. They draw another back row. Now, we top deck the Seer at this point, and this is the exact thing that I was saying, is if we have Seer and the good and evil in the grave, you can make any play you want. So do this, and we went for Skarm, because we I decided um, to go into Dante, I think, in this. And Skarm is the best one to search, just so you can search more follow up for later. So Seer will get back the tuner. Very normal summon, overlay for Dante. Dante detach and mill. We mill a far far so we can get rid of this. Um, I put this into defense because I did not see a delay here, so this was either a bluff or a drowning. So I was making to myself, okay, either it's a drowning and we just put this to defense, we still have a floodgate triple to protect us, or um, it's not a drowning in the way. Because it wasn't chainable, so it wouldn't it couldn't be a card that just deals with one monster. It has to be like either a bluff or wall of D slash um, drowning. It was a bluff, so they just lost the game here. Alright, so next up. Up against Zuzu. I think this was Melodious. If you see Zuzu, it's usually Melodious. I think this was Melodious with a bad start. Starting hand. So yeah, they go set one, use skill, special, take back, and that's it. So this is one of the games where I was thinking, hey, having a lot of different names in PA is actually a really good and playing through disruption. So you will see here. Uh, I'm special summoning the Barbar, I'm special summoning the Rubik. So at this point, they are forced to Tretch. Why? Because if we synchro these two now into Virgil, they would have to TTH their own monster because Virgil will just shuffle the TTH by discarding a Farfa and then we still have the Crank Crank below. So they Tretch us here, but we are prepared for that. We can normal summon the Crane. Crane gets us back the Barbar and we overlay for Dante, because we want to get advantage. Dante mills, and we hit a Seer, which is very good. So Seer gets us back the tuner, and then we can special summon the Farfa from hand, because we have not used the effect yet. Uh, and then we can synchro those into Virgil, and we attack and attack, and apparently they did not have a hand trap. I attacked with Dante first, because I was thinking, okay, if they have the hand trap, 
then the Dante will die, but I will get something back through Dante's effect. And then the Virgil can take care of the monster while we have a Canadian. So they draw for turn. They go MST on our back row, set a monster, and that's just game because Virgil will shuffle that monster back. We still go for the Dante mill to get some resources. Barbar can burn for like 450, and Seer can get back the Barbar. Um, that's game. The Barbar burn seems very um, random, but sometimes it can actually come up. I think I have a replay where it does. I don't know if it's this one, but we will see in a bit. Okay, we're up against Odeon, and I think this was the replay. So we go first. And our hand is a bunch of names that do not generate advantage. So what we do here is we normal summon Alege, we special summon Farfa, we overlay for Dante, mill three, and we hit a Seer, which will bring back an Alege. And that's our turn. So the opponent is summoning Thunderbird and set three. So we know it's chain beat and that's actually a bit of a sketchy thing. So they attack into Alege, and actually Alege here in the damage that triggers and negates the Thunderbird, which means the Thunderbird cannot float out because it says specifically, except during the damage step. So what I can do and what I will do later is I will negate with the Alege, and then Canadia down so I can attack it. But at this point, I don't, didn't think I have enough advantage to actually use the Canadia. And I can just like, they cannot run over Dante with this. So I did not do it yet. So we draw a Flakia Trapple, which doesn't do much because everything they do floats, right? So we just mill with Dante again, and we you see we hit a Seer and a Farfa, which is very good because Farfa will now banish the Thunderbird, and Seer will get back a monster. The Thunderbird will leave the field, and the accumulated fortune will draw them two cards, while the chain reaction will damage me by 200. So they draw two, we get Alege back, and we put Dante into attack. So if we had a Barbar in Grave instead of Alege, this would have been game, but obviously they have two back row. Now, funnily enough, I, I felt a replay, but they let these two attacks go through. And if you're observant, you see there's a bar bar in my hand. So from here on, I knew, okay, they have a lot of back row and they have monsters that I can't deal with. So the best thing to do here is to just burn them with bar run. Now, the thing is, I can lose here if they have a karma cut set and they karma cut my bar bar because then it does not go to the grave and will not trigger. So the Thunderbird comes back. Um, runs into the Alege again, and now I decided, okay, I'm going to negate the Thunderbird, and I will also Canadia it, because I want them to use the back row here on Dante or whatever I draw, so that I can use my Baba to burn them out. So they try to dodge, but they can't, and it's my turn. So we draw um, Kagna, and you see, Instead of going for a fancy Barbara play, I summon the Kagna to see what they have back there. They have a Hallucigenia and they will damage me and damage this. And then I bumped with my Dante. I took 50 damage, but then the Dante also went to defense because I don't want them to run over it. So they set again and we use. So the plan was to. Test out the back row with Kagna if they have Karma Cut, so be it. If they don't and the Kagna dies, I can mill good and evil. So what that does now for me is I can just discard my Barbar from hand, get any monster I want, and if they don't have specifically a counter trap there, this is game. So now Barbar and Grave triggers, I banish two, three BAs, deal 450 damage, and lethal. Against um, Mind of the Planner, um, not, not Mind of the Planner, against Chain Lead, the Mind of the Planner skill is actually super good because they will dodge 
and you will just remove them from the game. So second to last replay, we're up against Primo. So we're going second. And I think they were just playing Harpies. So yeah, it's just Harpies with whatever skill, I don't know. And they just go slash, set one, and get follow up. So we have two names in hand, one good name and uh, Farfa, which is decent. Uh, also two back row, which is not as good going second. So we draw the fifth card and it's another back row. So I just normal summon Seer and special summon Farfa because I want the Seer effect to go off eventually, maybe. So we overlay for Dante and we want to see if they actually bounce here. So we use Dante, they let us use Dante effect, we mill three and we hit um, we hit a Kagna, we hit a Farfa, no, the Farfa was detached. So we hit Kagna, we hit uh, Alich, and we hit Econ. And now they decide to Forbidden Chalice for whatever reason, and also chain the Harpy Slash Lady to bounce on Far uh, Dante, which is fine because we already got our advantage. So the Kagna will mill, and the Seer will get back the Farfa. I decided to bring back Farfa because if they have, like, more stuff here. Um, Farfa can mitigate some damage by banishing something. So we mill and we set three and pass. So they go Harpy's Hunting Ground and chain slash to bounce the Farfa. Okay. They normal summon the Channeler, Harpy's Hunting Ground target Canadia, which will then flip down the Channeler because it's forced out anyway. And we don't want to take damage and we want to clear up the back row a bit. So we just flip the slash down. Now we flip the slash down because we have the good and evil in the grave and we can search for follow-up. Now I could have gotten something like um, seer or whatever but we have a back row set so we cannot special summon but we know the harpy slash has 1400 defense and they have plus 200 defense so 1600 which means I use this to get Barbar. Bar. If the field spell wasn't up, this would have been um, 1400, so we could run over it by Seer. But in this case, we had to go for Barbar, Bar, which is also a funny uh, application of Barbar. It's just the most attack on a BA is 1700. So we normal summon him, and we run over the slash, and it's their turn again. So they flip the channeler, they use the effect, and they hunt the hunting ground will trigger. The Perfumer will trigger, and on that we are forced to Canadia. We decided to flip down the Perfumer, because if they are going to make a Synchro play here, they have to use the Chandler, which means um, they will not have follow-up if I can't run over it, which Rubik cannot. In the case of, for example, top decking back row. So they pop their own hunting around, get a Slash Lady, attack, Barbar and Grave. I banish the Alich and the Kagna because you never resurrect them, right? You always go for Seer, Farfa, or Tuner anyway, or Skarm. So I just took the free damage here. So then it's my turn, and I drew Crane Crane, which is the best follow up card you can have. So Crane Crane will get back the Seer, go into Dante, which they bounced. We detach the um, Seer. Mill three, we hit another seer and two crane crane, whatever, we just wanted to discard the seer, and the seer will bring it far far. So now we can special summon the Rubik, and then we go overlay into Giga Brilliant, which we then rank up into Corbage, and then the Farfa will trigger to banish the slash, and then Corbage will take, uh, take care of the set monster. So we have a clear field for lethal. <clears throat> All right, so the last replay is going to be here. Another Odeon. So we go first. And um, our hand is full of names, but 
We can also think strategically what we are going to do with these names, right? So this is the tuner, this is the farfa for, for banishing, this is uh, Kerkna for milling, and this is Seer for resurrecting. So what's the best setup here? We normal summon the Kerkna because we want to use the effect, and then we special summon the Seer. We overlay both, and then we use Dante's effect to mill the Kerkna and mill three. If we hit a seer here, we won't get the effect, which is sad, but it's better to do this. So we can see we hit a crane crane, a farfa, and a barbar. So we activate Kagna effect, and we also activate barbar effect because we have the Kagna and grave, which we never resurrect. Get 150 damage and mill our follow up. So now this looks a bit iffy because we only have the Dante with a Seer, um, but we do have the follow-up and the Grave with good and evil. We have two cards in hand. So if they cannot OTK through a Dante that floats into Seer... No, so they um, if they kill the Dante, the Seer will then resurrect the Farfa, which then will also take care of another monster. So that's already three attacks. So they have to somehow get through it without just attacking but via text or anything. So it's not that easy to OTK through this. So they are Samurai Skull, Shiranui. I'm just gonna set three and pass. So we use Dante Effect to mill, get some advantage first, see what we mill, and we hit a Seer and a Skarm, which is very good. So the Seer will bring back a Barba, and they bad aim our Dante. This was totally fine for us because we didn't need our Dante anyway. So we just pop it, we get back the Barbar, and Dante will trigger to get back the Seer, so we can make more plays. Then we special summon the Tuner, because we want to go into Virgil and force more back row out. So here's the Virgil, and they immediately Ballista squatted the Virgil, because otherwise Virgil could have discarded and got more advantage. So they kill that. We get the Canadia back here, because I figured just um, get some damage in while they have no field. And the Virgil then draws a card, which is nice, which is a Crane Crane, which is an insane top deck here. So summon Crane Crane, we get the tuner back and we make another Virgil. So then we go Virgil effect, discard. This was not chainable for whatever reason. So we set the Canadian, do we attack and attack? And then the Skarm will get us a Farfa. So looking at our hand, um, my plan here was I have the good and evil in the grave, so I also have the barbar in grave. So if they man do not manage to kill us here, we can just go good and evil, discard, seer, get whatever we want, um, and then resurrect the barbar. And then with the far farm that we still have in hand, we can just make any rank three that can detach, so the barbar goes into grave, and then we burn them for the rest of their life points. So they go Samurai Skull, they mill the Solitaire, use Spectral Sword, bench those, get a 6, Solitaire triggers, get Spectral Tuner, they Synchro to Coral Dragon. I waited for the effect because I was sure they were going to try and pop the back row or the Virgil, I think. I was fine with that. So they discard and they target the back row, so now I use the Canadia to flip down the zombie, because this has the most attack, and they can just go Coral Dragon, run over the um, Canadian. So here I don't even have to attack. I could have lethal them like by traditional means, just getting rid of the monsters, but let's say I somehow they draw a card or whatever. I guess I could have shuffled the Coral Dragon with Virgil, discard Farfa, banish this, and go for game. But I did the play that I planned to do, which was get back the Barbar, normal summon the Seer, go for a Giga Brilliant, and I think they will concede here. No, um, I ranked up, so I got the Barbar into the grave, and I think they conceded here as I wanted to click on yes for Barbar. So that's all the replays. Um, once again, if you want a solid deck list, um, this would be it.
if you want a more experimental deck list, check out the other ones. Uh, go back to the beginning of the videos. But yeah, let me know. What uh, did you do with BA so far? Did you like the deck? Was it good for you? Do you think it's lacking something? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.